I am super thrilled to present to you my amazing clients on a success panel that we had during a live event um, recently where all of my clients showed up and shared their story of what it was like to work with me, what successes they've had, hint, hint, many have a ring, and how it has transformed their lives, not only in their dating and relationship situation, but all aspects of their lives. So without further ado, I present to you my amazing, beautiful, gorgeous clients in the next clip. Enjoy. I'm so excited to have you. You're pinned now. The audience I know is wondering like, okay, what does success look like? What What is a success story? So can you share a little bit sort of high level what your success has been so far? Um, my my success point uh, is that I got engaged just about five weeks ago. It's a very high level success. And then there's a journey obviously behind that. <laughs> your sound is a little choppy. It's possible my internet, is, internet isn't great. I okay. can't do anything about that. Okay, but we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, so you got engaged. And okay, so what did you do? What have you been doing differently um, based on my advice, based on my method that you attribute to that success? Sure. So I was sharing with the other ladies that I was in a 16-year marriage. Um, and then after leaving that marriage, obviously, uh, you know, I kind of had lost myself in it and didn't really know who I was, what I was about, kind of what I wanted, all of the things. Um, so working with you, I kind of got clear about um, that that was required. And I certainly wasn't looking for a man um, early on. I spent a lot of time on my own, just kind of uh, building my own relationship with myself, which is something that we had talked a lot about. Um, and that that took, um, I actually really enjoyed that process. And then along the way, probably about a year after I started dating, and I remember when you introduced abundance dating to me and I was not ready and I didn't quite like the idea. Um, that's not, wasn't part of my framework. And I think as I've heard other women talk about it too. So I felt the same things like um, it just felt insincere. Uh, anyway, so my first couple of forays into dating, um, I just wanted to go get a sense of kind of who I was in this place. Um, Anyway, pretty soon after I started abundance dating, and that was so liberating for me because nothing mattered as much. So I got a lot of experience in a short period of time. I got to bounce myself off a bunch of different people and just get a clearer sense of what I liked, who I liked to be with, what my energy was, what how I was affected by other people's energy. Um, so there was a lot of learning in that for me. And I think that's how I ended up approaching it. Um, I wasn't ready for something super serious just yet. I did, however, meet... Um, my now fiance, I met him during that period. Um, and we ended up having about a year and a half relationship, but I just wasn't, my heart wasn't fully opened. I don't think I had fully healed um, from my marriage. Um, yeah, so you and I also did a lot of work during that period too, because it wasn't clear to me whether it was him or whether it was me. Um, and those were some difficult times because it's so difficult to tease out. So I, I really found your support important for me then. I Doing that alone was just kind of crazy making. I was in my head a lot about it and you kept bringing me back to my body and being feminine and trusting myself and what feels good for me. And I think I eventually ended up clear idea that I needed to be in a certain way so that I could attract him as opposed to me just being me and getting really clear on that. And then I will attract the right him. So that was a huge paradigm shift for me. Yeah. Um, so I would also say, so with men picking up for about um, a year, um, even though he was wonderful and all of that, it wasn't the right timing. And I think we both ended up growing and I ended up attracting him from a place of me being me rather than me stuck in the old patterns of, you know, trying to please him and then being myself and you know, that dance. So now I'm showing up where I'm just me and it's not perfect, but it's Boy, now you totally cut out. I think uh, when Heather, when you said you ended up breaking up for about a year that got, oh, she, we lost her totally. That totally got mumbled out. Um, but we got the gist, right? We got the gist. Oh my gosh. What, a, what a great story. Oh, 
it's so good. It's so good. It's so juicy. This is what I live for. Um, and we, we also have Diana who's not, who couldn't make it, but she sent me a picture. She's, uh, some of you know, Diana, right from the group, you know, Diana. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to screen share while we, um, I'm going to screen share. She sent me, she's like, sorry, I can't make it. I have this, whatever she has something. And, um, she sent me this picture. He's wedding dress shopping. Yes, it's showing up on Facebook. She's wedding dress shopping because they're getting married in March. All this technical stuff. So ladies, what breakthroughs and success have you had so far? How specifically has working with me in our Queen School helped you where you ha- where you may not have ever been able to learn that or find that or have that elsewhere? And um, could you have done this on your own? Go for it, Susan. I, I had been doing this on my own for six years and I didn't, I'm not somebody to give up, but it really got frustrating. And I forget how, I, I think I saw Barbara somewhere and it made sense. And I thought, no, oh, this isn't something I really want to do, but I thought I'm not really having success in what I am doing. So I started in on it and I could see, you know, changing my profile, doing a lot of things. I wasn't abundance dating. I would go out with one and then I'd wait, you know, he wouldn't call back. And then I started abundance dating. And I think a big thing for me, because I've always been in my masculine, is getting into my feminine side, which I still have to work on. I'm I'm in a relationship now. Uh, It was when I was abundance dating. And abundance dating was so much fun. And it's letting go of a lot of old tapes. You know, you should only be seeing one person at a time. And I even had friends saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. But I was having too much fun. And then I I met Jay. And he's, he was just a real man and he just, and it's so much easier being with a man that really wants you instead of me trying to make it work and doing all the work. And it was really emotionally exhausting before where now it's so much more fun and I can be myself and I don't have to worry about what I say, if it's stupid or I said the wrong thing. Even if I feel like I do, I'll say something and he says, that's okay. So, and I'm still working on my, as I said, on my feminine. And I think it's going to be something I'm going to be working on for a long time because when I get stressed, I want to kick into the masculine and I'd be much better to kick, just let the feminine come in. And I think the one thing that really helps me is something Jay said, I like how you look at me. And that's when in my, when I'm in my feminine. And I'm thinking, well, that's the reward because then that makes him want to give back to me instead of me trying to make it, being in my business mode, trying to make it happen. I love that. Thank you, Susan. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. What breakthroughs have you and success have you had so far working with me? Some of you are newer than others. Susan has been working with me for a while. Could you have done this on your own in general? Why hire a coach? Well, I can speak to that. The answer is, is no, I could not have done this on my own. And and I think I want to clarify what I mean by that. I could have continued the pattern I was in of attracting the same kind of men on my own. Absolutely. But when you talk about like making shifts and attracting different men, <clears throat> excuse me, and recognizing, I guess, kind of like protective, you know, I guess like defaults that I have as well in my own life. I think that's where like having... Barbara is just like a game changer because it's just like, I think anything else, whether it's a sport or something, if you want to level up, sometimes you get a trainer just because if it's just you at the gym, you can get off whenever you want. Same is true emotionally and psychologically and mentally that when it kind of like what Susan was saying, like when it gets tough and I think we all kind of lean in as just being very successful women and women that have achieved a lot in life, but the 40 year version of me still wants in a man or in a relationship with a 20 year old version did. I just haven't gotten, <laughs> you know, life and things that happen. And I'm like trying to find my way back to what does that look like? So having someone there to help you stay on your emotional treadmill or whatever it might be when you want to get off and go back to what is just a well-worn path. Like that is why you need a coach. If you want to keep doing what you're doing, get the results you're doing, them trying. But if you want to change and have someone outside of like family or Someone that doesn't have that relational bias, someone that cares for you, but that their main objective really is this goal of helping you achieve what you want. And that's the difference between that and just your support circle and that and your friend. Like this is someone who's an expert and an amazing cheerleader. Thank you, Trish. So tell me, tell us, tell the audience. I mean, there's there's going to be lots of people watching the replay and we're actually streaming to Facebook. So it, it there are people on Facebook watching this. Um, 
what, what breakthroughs have you had that you couldn't have done on your own so far? Um, I think the first one is I'm a recovering people pleaser. And that also goes with my relationship with men. And, and I think the biggest breakthrough is just now having an awareness of, of what it is I want and then what I'm doing in my behavior that's actually like detracting that very thing. And I think the big breakthrough was learning that self care, or as you say, radical self acceptance is a lifelong practice. It's not kind of like this thing you do until you get the guy because ultimately like the biggest breakthrough it's, it's so obvious. I can't believe that I'm even saying it, but it just, it needs to be said that your happiness is first and foremost, like an inside job and will always be like forever. Yeah. And, and every good high quality man cannot wait to be anything more than like someone adding to your existing happiness, as opposed to this like bleach that you're clinging onto to bring it because one day his humanity is going to kick in and he won't be there. It's a learning, I think, for me, like how to give to myself first when I'm looking for a relationship was was a huge breakthrough. And then starting to to not really give two craps what what anyone thinks. And then it's okay, you know. So so it's it's huge. There's a lot less, as I call it, like internal neurosis. I just don't have anymore. And and it's just like there's a silence in my heart and a peace in my mind. So huge breakthroughs. It's now fun. Like now it gets to be fun, right? Like you get through some of your crap. And you get to go back to me what dating was before it had all these layers and all this history, which is fun. So. Yay, Trish. Give her a hand. Yay, Trish. Love you. You're doing, you like, just for the audience too. And to remind all of you guys, you are doing the work. Like I never claimed that I'm going to do the work for you, but I'm going to be beside you, keeping you accountable to your own dreams. That's all I'm doing. And so give yourself some credit a lot of credit because you've, you know, I, I mean, we've seen you transform in Queen School. You've just broken through these layers and come out this gorgeous queen. So I'm so proud of you. You're amazing. We have an awesome community. Like, that's what I love too. Is like, like, and you, there are times where I've shown up and been like, I don't want to do this. I don't <laughs> like this. This is where I get ready to quit. Yeah. So yeah, that's what makes it so special. Amazing. All right. Let's hear from someone else. I can go. I think for me, the biggest um, thing that I've learned is like when we first had our call, you, you said, well, you know, can you do this now? And I said, no, I can't do this right now because I know that if I, when I date, I'm all in, it's all consuming. And you told me that's a narcissistic trait that I picked up along the way, which blew my mind. And I was like, okay, well, I need to be retrained because never in my life would have I have ever thought that that's something that I picked up and was focusing on my dating life, you know, something that happened when, in my marriage. And now I'm all in on me. And I'm not worrying about the men and it's fun because I just set a time and I go and I check on them. And if there's nobody there, that's great. I'll just swipe a few more and I'll go out and live my life. And I've had so much fun just kind of getting to know myself again and learning new things. And it's just been awesome. So I'm really grateful. Oh, that's amazing. And you've, you've done a lot of new things like going skiing yeah. and like uh, traveling by yourself. And just like, you've just really just come out and just, you're just like living life full out. And I love that about you. Like that is such a huge transformation. You were always waiting for the perfect time to do this one thing and then perfect yep. time for this one thing. And now you're just doing it. Yeah. Wow. So good. And your energy, even just your energy has changed. Like you're just, your radiance just so beautiful. Thank you, Holly. You're amazing. Yeah, thank you. I want to comment on Holly's just because I came in after, maybe after Holly's changed, but from the beginning, it's been like, who the hell is Holly? Because every, on every coaching call, it's like, Holly, how are you doing? And Holly's like, I'm really good. I like my life. I love myself. Like, it's like, and it's like, oh my God, who is this woman? Um, and, and so I just want to put that out there that it's like, it's like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm like watching you. You're inspiring to me. Yeah. And it wasn't always like that for Holly. It was not, that took really big commitment on her part to, to develop into that. So yeah, huge. Thank you for that acknowledgement of her. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go next. I, um, I'm a writer, so I wrote everything out uh, to answer these questions. So welcome to my TED talk. Um, I'm just going to go down <laughs> these bullet points. I knew the questions you were going to ask. And I was like, I won't, I have to, gosh, welcome to my masculine, but this makes a lot of sense for me. So um, I'm, all of these are my results and breakthroughs. And I promise that I have not ever done these things before. Um, and I joined up with Queen School in mid-November. So it's really been mid-February just for it's been, yeah it's been about two and a half months so first of all 
I am successfully dating multiple men and I have a bona fide man funnel, which is a term used in Queen School where all the men are on different tiers of enjoyability and potential. And uh, and I did the math yesterday and I have been on 53 total dates um, with 34 different men because some of them were second, third, fourth and fifth dates. Uh, that's great. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've never done that before. I've never, done, never dated multiple people. Um, I have a good time on first dates. And I my mindset is that with every man who isn't right, it's a step closer to one who is. Learned that directly from Barbara. Um, I am actually, so I'm a work in progress, obviously. I mean, we all are, but I really am because I'm still uncomfortable with men paying for everything. But I will say they are paying for everything and I'm letting them, um, even, even when I'm like uncomfortable and get flushed and like, you know, go into a, a bit of a tailspin. But it's still happening. Like the action is still being taken by them. Um, I can unattach from first dates about 99% of the time and release the outcomes. The main thing is they're no longer the time bombs I latch onto with desperation. Um, I used to think when it did go bad, oh, what could I have done differently? What's wrong with me? Um, but this time it's like, next. <laughs> uh, very, I would say pretty, like without too much drama. I, I'm still a human, so it's, it does sometimes suck. But uh, the suck, it's like 45 minutes as opposed to what used to be probably four days. Um, I, I can see a man's intentions a lot, like extremely clearly. Even my family has commented on this, um, whether the intentions are good, high quality intentions, unaligned intentions, or even this is the, it's like the wolf in sheep's clothing where it's unaligned intentions, but they're masked as good intentions where they're like, I'll pay for dinner for you. And then, and then, I don't know, you'll, you'll just realize that it means something to that, or I don't know, but, but it's pretty apparent. I, I can see it very clearly now. And then when I say a no, it's not just because I'm like, oh, I don't think I like him. It's more like, this is not a match because of what I told myself that I wanted. And it's like crystal clear, um, which, which was never the case before. It was just before it was so anything was possible. It was this amalgam of thoughts that were like, no, I think question mark, uh, or yes, I don't know, you know, as if I wasn't holding the reins, but they were, um, big change. Uh, my beliefs joining Barbara were very much, I'm running out of time. Everyone except me has this aka a relationship or a husband and now my beliefs are i'm doing my part i'm buying my lottery tickets and it's up to the universe if i win and my man is on my way or my man is on his way he can get on my way that's fine um and then <laughs> uh three more guys um <laughs> i dated a friend from a friend group who i've known over a decade but he only just asked me out in december a month into queen school and so I guess the point is I've known him for so long, but only a month working with Barbara, we've both been single only a month working with Barbara. And then he asked me out and it turned romantic. Like, so, so I just believe that that's the energy shift. It's, it's like I shifted, which meant he was like, hello, who are you? And that was, I, I attribute queen school to that. Um, I'm able to ghost people never ghosted anyone before with, without abandon, just, uh, it's one of those, like when you speak your boundaries, okay, that's powerful. But if you know your boundaries, uh, you don't even have to speak them. And so that's, it's more of that where I'm like, oh, I already know what's going on for me. So text me, whatever, you're not going to affect me. Um, and then overall, this is the general thing. Dating, dating itself has gotten a lot more automated, like planning wise and scheduling. It's just one of those like, okay, this is happening. This is part of my life. Like you're going to eat a meal. You're probably going to go on a date or four dates this week. It's fine. And then, and then the emotions part of dating has gotten a lot more neutral. So even though there are, there are some real gems out there, um, <laughs> real gems. Um, I don't, I can't imagine getting as emotionally triggered at all. Like, I, I mean, still maybe like 10, 10% or definitely going to be a fraction of the amount I was emotionally triggered uh, before. Um, and then if you want me to continue my TED talk, I've got some points about if I could have gotten these results on my own and, and then why I should, uh, why, why I feel I need to spend money to work with Barbara. Um, should I keep going? It's going well, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, I muted myself. I was saying yes. Like, okay, like, okay, okay. Yes, keep going. I'm keep going. going. Here we go. Have another half hour. All right. Um, so I do think I could have gotten these results and breakthroughs on my own, and it would have taken about five years. Um, and right now it's I'm at two and a half months. So it's it's worth it for me because it's like, oh, well, let the experts do what the experts do. I'll just be over here, you know, doing what they tell me to. Uh and I I feel like I, I, the reason I think I could have gotten there on my own, I would have read the books. I would have figured it out, you know, but here's where I would have misstepped is there's actions to take. There's nuanced and fairly small, but meaningful. And I would have seen those actions and been like, got it. I should do that. 
I'm not going to do it. And then spent whatever time not doing it or trying it. And then the minute it got painful, stopped and, and gone in that cycle. And then probably five years later, I've been like, you know, maybe I will give it a shot. And and I could just see this happening. The main ones are don't ask questions and go out with every guy who asks you out. Like I was, I remember I told Barbara, no, I'm not, I'm fundamentally not doing it. <laughs> and she said, well, you're paying me a lot of money, so may as well do it my way. And I was like, that's a good point. <laughs> but, but I was, I mean, but that's where I would have been is like, no, I'm not. Are you referring I'm, to abundance dating? Sorry. I am referring to abundance dating. Okay. Yes. So you I were was, fundamentally, you were just like, well, not like I hired you, you're great, but I'm not doing that. And I was like, okay. Yes. You have to, but yeah, you can lead the horse to water, but yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I jumped on board and this gets into the, the bit of the money piece, which is like, yeah, like I actually am, I'm paying to have a breakthrough. So, and she's giving me the, the guidelines, so I don't have to do it, but why wouldn't I? Um, and I'm really happy that I did, but I, I know without the financial, I, I do think money's energy anyway, but like without the, and I think you vote with your money, like everything you spend your money on, you're kind of voting for it. And so I was like, I'm voting on dating. So may as well make the most of it. And and really what could, what's, what's the worst that could happen was how I went into it. And now I'm so glad I did because it's like, oh, I've seen the light, you know, I've seen the face of God through dating. Um, boy, not really. I, that's, that's over dramatic. <laughs> that's over dramatic. But like, but like, I, I, I get it now. I really get it. And I, and without Barbara, um, I, without, yeah, without clean school, I wouldn't have done it. I I'm sort of paying to jump head first into the deep end, like jump in the net will appear, but, but I know the nets here, the clean school, Barbara texting each other, um, and, or, or sorry, texting the clean school. I mean, like we, we all text each other. And, and so I'm able to get messy and like take these huge risks, even though they might, I don't, they feel like big risks every time. I'm like, okay, cop, a million coffee dates. Here's a second date. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say yes. Like all of this stuff feels uh, messy. And then I just know, like, I don't have to wait for the net to appear. I already know what the net is. So I'm just going to jump. Um, and it's, it's rock solid guidance in my pocket. It feels like it's 24 seven. Like I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It feels like at any moment I could be like spiraling out and someone's on there to, to talk to me. And it's just, it's just amazing. So and that's for my context. Um, the, oh, yeah. My elite queens get uh, get to be part of a Telegram messaging group, which is like WhatsApp, where I'm in there, um, you know, monitoring, answering as many questions as I can. Sometimes I'm like too many, too many messages. Like I can't, I can't get to them all. But the urgent ones bring them to the bottom. But usually I'm like right there, like in your pocket, like Amy is saying, um, which you know if you have to wait between calls week to week, that's a long time to wait to get your question answered. So, so that's what you're talking about is this group chat. That's like instant coaching any time of day and night that has helped you get through some rough times. Yes. And I mean, the screenshots of just like, what, what does this guy mean? And normally like, it's just, it's just the screenshots are so good. I just love being able to send screenshots. And then we analyze that, which is stuff I would do with my friends, but some of my friends are enablers where they're like, you yes. know, they're, it's, they're, their shit is spilling out all over on, onto the, the text messages. <laughs> um, and, and it's like, wait, that's not, hold on. Oh, that's a whole new thing, you know, but the Queens, we speak the same vocabulary. So yeah. It's yeah. Different. Amy, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to open the floor to all of you and just, you know, I'm sure other things came up that you wanted to share. We still have, you know, 20 minutes. We can end it early. It's no pressure, but, you know, keep sharing what what other things you, you know, came up for you about um, about your coaching experience. Well, I, I like what Amy said about, um, like our, our group that we have, because I do feel like there is this, we, we now have a common language. And of course, like, if, like there's only one coach and that's Barbara, but just knowing that like you can take the risks because the net is always going to be there as opposed to waiting for your girlfriends or your best friend and everyone, and let's just assume positive intent that everyone in your world really does mean well, they're always going to come with their lens of wherever they're from onto you. And again, the goal is just to come out really a better version of you because we're all wanting this amazing guy. Well, that amazing guy also is looking for someone amazing too. And so we're wanting to show up being the best version of ourselves. And so having someone be like, you've been triggered. Maybe we're reading too much into this message, you know, and, and, you know, what Susan said about like staying in our femininity because there, um, and there are times when it's like, I'm not going on the app. Like this is, this is like boss babe moments and not a good time to be trying to be like, oh, it felt wonderful today when I went, no, I have, I have stuff to do. I have 19 emails that I haven't read for a meeting, like, you know, so learning these rhythms in your day and these rhythms in your energy um, is, is just huge because then you're, when you're with that, when, when you're with your man, I'm assuming, I don't have mine yet, then you can also be aware of like how to get back to being the feminine version of you. 
And then when you need to like step in, you know, to the masculine version to get crap done as well. But it's just, it's what you want. Like we all want someone that like we can be ourselves with and feel safe with and open up with. But when we have like all these guards up, how are they going to get there? So, yeah. Thank you, Trish. Awesome. Tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow. I can't wait. Love you all. Bye.